My name is Elaine Orsini, and I'm here to tell the story of our father, Basil Orsini. My dad left high school in grade 11 to join the Army. And a few years later, he was pulled out of the Army by his father. Well, he wanted to go to the Pacific, where, where there was a war going on there. So his father went to uh, the Senator Roebuck to have him taken out of the Army because he needed him in the construction business. It was very important he needed him. So, and, and of course, he was out of the Army. Dad was a dutiful and loyal son, and so he did follow into the construction business. My father grew up in the shadow of his father's construction business, and my granddad, in about 1917, left Italy and arrived on Ellis Island, like so many other immigrants. Emilio Orsini started building houses and apartments along St. Clara Avenue, east of Oakwood. So this actually became a very profitable time. His father did not have much formal education, but he was able to uh, do his figures and his calculations and come to the same conclusion as engineers did. So the Depression hit. And for so many other people, along with my granddad, there were great financial losses. So in 1935, at nine years of age, my father would do various jobs. And his summer jobs took him far away from home, from his loving mother, Sarah Feely, an Irish woman. So dad received his first-hand experience in construction, working from the bottom up. Notable projects granddad and dad did were the Treasury Building uh, in Toronto, and at the CE, &E, it was the Queen Elizabeth Building. He also um, worked on part of the Don Valley Expressway and the Gardner Expressway from Strawn Avenue to Humber River. They started on time and they finished actually earlier than the projected date. And my father was very proud of this and they never cut corners. On one occasion, he said that granddad had suggested that they upgrade the quality of the cement and uh, they turned it down. Since uh, granddad uh, was 18, and through the whole list of construction jobs through my grandfather's career and dad's career, there was not one man killed on the job. He wanted to quit the construction business. And I, I said, well, you're old enough to decide what you want to do. So whatever you want to do, do. And as soon as my grandfather died, the construction business was sold. Consultants and construction company owners would come to him seeking advice and consultation. I think this perhaps foreshadowed his love and career into arbitration. Prior to moving into the field of arbitration, uh, Dad joined the Canadian Executive Service Overseas he believed in giving back. That's a very important thing. Then he started to study law from LaSalle Uni a University in Chicago. And that's when he found his love. I think his true love was, was the law. So as a member of the Board of Referees, um, Dad always gave an impartial voice, although he was on the side of the underdog. He was so happy he'd be up early in the morning with his briefcase and away he'd go. Finally, at 75, they uh, retired him. We'd say that that was the cream in our coffee, the Board of Referees. Dad taught courses at U of T, Seneca College, Osgoode Hall at York University, and Dalhousie University. And these courses were uh, often used for correspondence courses. 
Dad was not all business. He had a great wit and he was very playful. He was actually a scout and cub leader. He was a great fan of backyard hockey. In fact, he would flood our rink every winter. He would use strawberry jello crystals for the red line and blueberry jello crystals for the blue line. Girls hockey was commonplace on our rink before it became fashionable. Well, after he wrote the books, I, I tried to read them. They seemed like Greek to me, so I didn't know that he was that smart. And he, and he was, and his, most of his children take after him. <laughs> oh, my papa, to me he was so wonderful. Oh, my papa. Dad, you are no longer an unsung hero.